finally awake, goodness me. First of all, I... I want to ask you a question. Uh, do you know where you are at the moment? No? That's fine. Um, you arrived here and you were very, very out of sorts uh, for a little while. Um, we gave you something to make you feel better, but um, you kind of just sat in the corner for a while. Wherever you were before you came here, you were in a horrible state and we wanted to look after you. So, I've kept an eye on you. You were in a table in the corner for a long, long time, but you suddenly got up and came over here and I've been helping helping you sort of stay in the right state ever since. We've closed now, but I'm always the one who gets left behind to take care of all of the extra scraps people leave behind, so I guess it's fine. It's my job to lock up, so no one's going to kick you out tonight. How's that head feeling, huh? You know, it's funny. When you arrived here, the, f the all you could say, you came up to the bar and you just said, oh, my head. Oh, my head hurts so much. And we obviously, I was worried. The other bar people, we were really worried as well. Got you some water, obviously. Um, and you seemed a little bit better after that. But, you know. Obviously, that's all in the eye of the beholder. If you're better now, you're better now. And if you're not, you're not. Had you been drinking before? You must have been, right? <laughs> been on some crazy night out. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I thought so. I thought so. Hmm? Hmm. Well, I mean, sometimes our tolerance can differ from... Our tolerance can differ from night to night. It depends on how much water you've been drinking. It depends on how much you ate beforehand. You know, even if you were kind of thought you were taking it easy, maybe maybe you just weren't really prepared. Maybe you were mixing a little too much. <laughs> These things happen. And hey, no judgment from me, all right? You know, would you like something to help you feel a little bit better? It's all fully stocked at the moment. Are you feeling hungover? Hmm. Not quite. I get it. I get it. You kind of don't feel like alcohol was the problem. That's a shame. A long day at work, perhaps? Yeah, no, we've had... We've had a lot of long days recently ourselves. The kinds of people who have been walking in here recently, goodness me, they've always got so many requests and special requirements and whatever it is. You seem to have perked right up. <laughs> you know, hey, I feel a little sorry for you and your predicament. My doctor's orders would be to keep drinking water, but if you're feeling a little bit better, you would be totally entitled to order something from the menu. Hmm? No, no, it's on the house, don't worry. I know you've been having a difficult night. Hmm. Oh, you did have a look when you came in. Good, good, good. Oh, that's an astute memory. Very nice. <laughs> Live here? In the bar, you mean? No. <laughs> No, I live nearby. Nearby enough, anyway. It's a bit of a, it's a little bit of a commute, but it's, you know, it's fine. I can handle it. All for the love of the job, right? All right. Why don't we make you a little something to drink, huh? Something cold might be a little refreshing. That'd be good. This is a personal favorite of mine. I'm going to start with... Now, listen, I know it might not be your preference, but this is one of my favorites, and I must insist you try it, all right? Just a little bit, okay?
That's all good. Let's strain that out for you. And once more. Very nice. All yours. Oh, what is it? It's whatever you want it to be. <laughs> Go on, drink up. It's all yours. On the house. Yes, yes, on the house. So, while I've given you a drink for free, you're going to tell me a little bit more about you for free. All right? Come on. Come on. I've been giving you so much all evening. I was the one who was looking after you. I've given you this nice drink. Come on. <laughs> I just want to know how you ended up here. Seems like it must have been a pretty insane night if you, you know, seemed to be under the impression that you wound up here in a state that made you seem drunk, but you weren't entirely drunk at all. You know, you were on one of those nights out where you decided, oh, I swear to God, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get messed up tonight. No, no, I'm just, just gonna have a couple martinis with my friends, just gonna go out for a beer, and then all of a sudden, whoop, you find yourself bent over the side of the road, You're in here, surrounded by noise, alcohol, smells, and you just want some help. So what happened? Hmm. You don't know, do you? Hmm. I'd hate to think something bad was going on. You know, if you ever get a strange feeling that something's going, that something's going wrong, uh, you can always call me here. Got a little, <laughs> got a little piece of paper with my number on it. I, I wrote it down beforehand. I just wanted to make sure that you had it in, you know, in case of something going wrong. What kinds of people were you hanging out with? Mm. Well, you did know them well enough then. Okay. Hmm. Maybe it's just one of those nights. I don't mean to implant any kind of scary, otherworldly thought in your head about, oh, who did this, and who did that, and who's got an agenda, and, and all of that. Maybe you've just overestimated your, you know, how heavyweight you are. Perhaps. for just one second. I'm going to give you a moment to think. If you remember something about earlier, you might as well tell me, okay?
think I'm all done finally. You know, I have the most terrible habit of leaving so many things to the last minute. I could be at home right now. Do you remember I told you about that commute? I told you about my commute and how, you know, it's a little long, but I don't mind it. Well, I could have gotten started on it ages ago. <laughs> But, but I didn't, because silly old me, I was leaving so many things out and about. Oh well. Have you had a chance to think at all, or is nothing coming up? No, I wouldn't have thought so. I wouldn't have thought so either. And that's fine. I don't need to know too much. Just trying to make some conversation. Let me ask you something else. You ask me roundabouts where I live. Whereabouts do you live? Are you nearby? Hmm. That... Strange, that doesn't ring a bell to me. It doesn't ring a bell to me at all. You sure you've got the name of that right? I mean, you should do. It's where, it's where, it's where you live, right? Um, let's see, name of that street. Um, maybe I shouldn't have given you that cocktail. Goodness me! <laughs> no, no, I, I've lived, I've lived in, I've lived in this city for the longest time. I. I've never heard of anywhere like that. What area is it in, like, roughly? The what? Sorry, let me, let me see you say that again. must have come from somewhere much farther away than I was anticipating. You live in this city, though, don't you? Right, yeah, you do. That is strange. I need to think of a way of figuring this out about you. Are you sure you're not getting a little confused? Maybe that's your hometown? No, no, yeah. Well, beats me. You've become so wildly drunk that you... I mean, take a look out the window. Do you recognize the skyline at all? If you live around here, you'd probably be able to point to where you live. We're pretty high up. few years, and in the years that I have been here, I've never in my life had to deal with a person who's <laughs> become so drunk that they've for not just forgotten the name of where they live, but they've seemingly made up something brand new. Hmm. Strange. Well, I won't ask you any more questions about that. It's probably it's probably a little stressful for you. You did just wake up from some kind of stupor. So I'll I'll ask you about something else. What are your plans for tonight, huh? Do you have a friend who can take you back to that imaginary place you come from? Alright. Uh 
Is it easy enough for you to get there? <laughs> Does the metro go to wherever that is? Fascinating. Somewhere in the city that I've never heard of, that none of the metros go to, and that no one will be able to bring you back to. That's strange. Well, in that case, it's probably not safe for you to go home. It's about to be sort of 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 05, 2 ten. I wouldn't want you going home on, alone. So, how about you and I chill here? I've got some more work to do, I've got some more cleaning up to do, so what you're going to do, if you'd like to, is you can wait around for me to get finished cleaning up, and then you can hop in my car and I'll try and help you find out where to go. Maybe by then you might have recalled the real name of where you live. <laughs> Does that sound good? More than welcome to say no, of course. Good. Alright. Let me get back to this. Sorry, I was getting distracted getting distracted talking to you. You do have a very fascinating story, don't you? So drunk, you forgot the name of where you live. That's sort of one of the main things that people remember when they're drunk, don't you think? It's your family, it's your home. you wind up telling anyone who wants to listen about it, won't you? You know how it is. It's all stuff you wouldn't want to get your fingerprints on. That's all I'm saying. Okay. So why don't you tell me some something you do know about yourself, hmm? That's a good one. Do you know how long you've been living here? Not that either. <laughs> Looks like there's a lot more of your memory we need to figure out after all. No idea. Hmm. Just trying to think of what must have happened. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe the answers are out there somewhere. You don't want to listen to me prophesize and try and figure out your own problems, do you? Don't want to hear me start to psychoanalyze you, do you? No, I wouldn't have thought so. I wouldn't have thought so at all. It's true, isn't it? Well, my name is Fox. What's your name? Hmm. Why am I not surprised? Came out here guns blazing, telling me that I didn't even know your name yet, and you are so out of sorts you don't even remember your own name. All right, we're dealing with a really difficult situation today, aren't we? No, it's fine. It's not scary to me. I'm just concerned for you, that's all. I'll figure out what to call you eventually, I'm sure. I swear, when I 
how many times I scrub these tables. They never seem to get any cleaner, do they? It's like over time they just sort of start gathering all of these extra bits. No matter how many times you wipe them down with no matter how many chemicals, there's always going to be something that starts building up. Some stain, and you can't remember where it came from, or who made it, or what made it. And then, all of a sudden, you... Finally figure out, maybe, I'd, you know, perhaps that one's going to be there for good. Maybe you're going to get the place repainted, and then you look somewhere else, and you find that another one's popped up elsewhere. Just kind of builds. Builds and builds and builds for ages and ages and ages. And then, eventually, too many stains for you to really worry about anymore. No amount of paint. No amount of paint across all of these different stains on the bar could ever cover them all up. They just keep popping up. And then you repaint them. <laughs> and then the paint gets stained again. Come on. Come on. Almost. No, not quite. That one's going to need something a little extra. Well, I've got some of that in the back. I'll worry about that later. So you don't know the name of the city. You don't know... You seem to, you seem to be from somewhere in this city that I swear doesn't exist. And you don't remember your own name. Well, would you like a crash course? I can get you up to speed if you like. Must be very confusing for you. Sure. Right now, you are on the 65th floor of a skyscraper right in the middle of the wonderful city of New Sidonia. This place uh, grew very quickly in the last 20, 40, 50 years. It blew up out of pretty much nowhere and has been growing ever since and I live just a short little ways away on a little street and I'm happy here I don't live in a fancy building like this but I like to work here brush shoulders with the higher ups in society you know it's always worth it in some way I think even if it can foster feelings of jealousy wind up sometimes getting these nice ideas when you're around those people, but I shouldn't get distracted, should I? <laughs> it's fascinating, really, how quickly this city started <laughs> sprouting from the ashes. course you wouldn't know about that either. Well, it used to be the foundation of something much smaller many, many years ago. It was technologically quite far behind. In fact, the rest of the world saw this place as being somewhat medieval. It was so small, in fact, and so behind the times. Uh, that it had become a little bit of a tourist attraction for a while. This is going back sort of 70, 80 years, I think. And, well, after a while, when these tourists started coming and seeing all these people who obeyed these old ways and had their old traditions, they, they got a little bit too nosy. And, well, as the story goes, what happened after that is that some people with all of these interesting ideas started coming to the city as well, and eventually they stumbled upon what they can only describe as a miracle resource. At least that's what they called it. They've never really told anyone what it is. Some kind of precious metal, some kind of power source. I've, I've got no idea, personally. But when they found it, suddenly, this little town of New Sidonia became frequented by some of the biggest industrial builders and technological researchers in the entire world. And from there, it exploded.
expanded and expanded and expanded into what do you see today? I mean, have a look on the outside. You ever seen skyscrapers this tall? I know some parts of the world have big ones, but they're not as big as this. Oh yes, no, we were all very confused being taught all of this in school. <laughs> Doesn't make much sense to me, but it is what it is. They held, they found their power, held on to it, and now we are where we are. Oh my god, you don't even... Right. <laughs> you wouldn't even... Okay. So, I want you to take a look out the window for me right now. Up in that direction, okay? Can you, for me, peer just a little bit into the distance past the skyscrapers? And what you can see is a very tall wall. Can't you? Look. There are lights all over it. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Those dotted blue lights running in sort of a big ring that goes behind all the skyscrapers. The funny thing about New Sidonia is that no one's allowed in, and no one's allowed out. I think the rest of the world has kind of fallen off a little bit. thing is, I don't exactly know how. I've got no idea, nor do I have any recollection of any history books with any information about whatever it was like before. But I'm happy here, so it is what it is. No, no, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> it makes perfect sense to me, I think, if you think about it. It's always bound to happen eventually. It's just a matter of time. Why would they? Hmm? Why would these people want to share everything they'd earned with that thing they found? They'll ever let us know what it is. Hmm. I just told you, I've got no idea what's on the outside. I was born in here. And that's what makes me so curious about you. You didn't remember your name. You didn't remember your... So, how you got here. The one thing you remembered was a place that you lived. And I've been here long enough to know, at the very least, all the vague areas of the city, all the districts at the very least, and you can't seem to name a single one, but you have your street down, and you don't know which one of those districts it's in. It's very bizarre. Why do you remember that and nothing else? Hm. If you were given something while you were drinking, it <laughs> sounds like it messed you up pretty badly, right? <laughs> From outside, really. <laughs> I doubt it. No, I really doubt it. If anyone has gotten in from outside, why? no one on the inside has ever really heard about it. It's all sort of been a... I really do doubt it's a cover-up of any kind. No. I just think those walls are impossible. And what? I mean, look at you. How would you have managed to get in here? No offense, but I mean... Someone who could get past that, the first person in history? Nah. No, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. If I was to be completely honest, and I don't want you to take any offense to this, I have two theories about what's happening to you. Okay? Number one, I think that uh, you drank a little bit too much and somehow you're getting fuzzy memories 
when you've woken up. I mean, it's still the same night. It's about... It's reaching sort of 2.30 now. You might very well still be drunk. Or theory two. And the more that I learn about you, the more that I'm starting to think this might be true. You're fucking with me. Which... Hands up. Impressive. I did, I did believe you for a long time. <laughs> no, there's that eye contact. You're not fucking with me, aren't you? And if you were, you're a very good liar for someone who's completely intoxicated. And I think it'd be difficult to fake the way you were falling all over the place when you came in. Hmm. Well, still got a quite a while to go with all of this stuff. I, I really should have been taking care of it earlier, believe me. Uh, there's just all of this stuff that's out of order, it's all over the place, and I feel like I need to just sort of take everything under the bar and pull it out and put it back in again. It's a, it's a nightmare. They give me far too much to do here, you know? Far too much to do. Anyway. If you don't mind, I think I'm going to have a drink as well. Just something to soften my nerves. You are freaking me out just a little bit, you know that? It's not like it's your fault. <laughs> no, I... What would I be if I kicked you out? I mean, it's a big city. Wandering around in the dead of night. Trying to find a place that you don't... You don't know where it is, and supposedly you can't find it on the metro. It'd be a little cruel of me if I kicked you out now, wouldn't it? Can I make a drink for... You want to make a drink for me? <laughs> Why? No, 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 no. I'd rather you not mess this up. I'm, I've spent long enough trying to tidy this all up, okay? <sighs> anyway. Anyway. While well, we're here, if you really don't know anything, perhaps I can tell you a few stories about this place. You know, the kinds of things we get taught in school. The kinds of fairy tales, urban legends that sort of get passed around. Whether or not they're true is obviously up to your own interpretation. A lot of us like to believe in them a lot more than perhaps you might expect. Well first story, and the one that most children are taught through a little nursery rhyme, is one about the man who founded this place. And do you want to know the fun part about them? Not only has this place blown up over the course of 50, 60 years, and the power source that allowed it to blow up was discovered some 80, 90 years ago. Supposedly, that person is still alive. Crazy, isn't it? Supposedly, well, some people have the idea that it's more of a sort of an a sort of a title. It's more of sort of a title that's passed down from person to person, and whenever the last one dies, they give it to someone else, and it moves back and forth and back and forth and. While we on the outside are given the impression that we have some mighty immortal leader who's ruling everything. We, in school, they had kids, they sing this little chant about Mr. Everlasting, they call him. And it, I used to find it quite like, I don't know, I 
used to find it quite grating when I was growing up. You know, the instant you're not like a little kid anymore, all of a sudden you start hearing these songs about Mr. Everlasting, and suddenly it just starts to get a little annoying. You know, I I I, I always I always figure it's just kind of like a title or some sort of you know some kind of method for the government to get people to constantly believe in our power but the problem is is that i don't think you really need something secret like that in order to make that work right you wouldn't all you need is to take a look around you look outside again i mean look at that i don't need some mythical everlasting creature to make me feel like we're never going to fall down but I mean, what goes up must come down, right? I don't like to believe that. I like it. So there's that. And supposedly, Mr. Everlasting, or at least the first Mr. Everlasting, was the one who found whatever it was that caused this city to blow up, and now the current Mr. Everlasting, or just the original one, but many, many years later. You know, maybe it is the same guy. We've advanced medically so much, it wouldn't surprise me. They haven't really figured out how to reverse aging yet. But we don't really have diseases here. We don't really have any diseases here anymore. You just kind of walk into a doctor's office and they sort of press a few buttons and then beep beep. Yeah, amazing, right? Maybe it is just one guy. <laughs> Maybe they kind of trialing all of that anti-aging shit on him. Hmm. Maybe we'll get access to that one day. I'd like to. I think that'd be fun. <laughs> Met him. <laughs> oh, I got a load of you. At least it seems like you've got short-term memory loss as well as long-term. Listen, nobody needs that. Nobody. Whether it's a him, a her, or a them. Nobody's got any idea. Ooh. Well, I've just thought of something else that's very interesting. It's another story. It's a little bit more complicated, this one. So you'll have to bear with me and let me know if your head's hurting and I can whip you up something else to drink, all right? <laughs> Obviously, while none of us really have any idea of what's actually out there, what we do know is that there are people. All sorts of different people. All sorts of different people who are out there and want to get in. Like earlier, why I said I was so surprised when you said, well, maybe I came from outside. <laughs> because people have been trying ever since this place was founded. Ever since those walls were built, people have been trying. Because they thought something was on the inside. And they're right. I mean, look at, look at, all, look at all we've got, right? And... We started calling these people it was this group, this sort of, this group of people who were always trying to get in. We don't know really if it was one organized attempt or if it was just a number of small groups constantly trying to either scale the wall or get underneath it or find some kind of secret entrance. No, no, I said, of course I said that. Are you following? I don't know what's outside the walls, but I know there are people. 
where else would all the other people have gone? If there were no people outside, why would we even need the walls to begin with? I shouldn't be so judgmental. Anyway, we have a name for them. We like to call them <laughs> breaches, and it's ironic because they've never actually successfully breached anything. We always hear all we hear we hear all sorts of different things, you know, and I really have to feel for the kinds of people who live in in the buildings near to the walls, because I wonder if you could hear them sometimes, you know? I wonder if you could hear them trying their little schemes, trying all of their little ideas. What if they've got some giant pneumatic drill on the outside, and then they just start drilling underneath the wall, into the rocks, into the soil, and then popping up on the other side? Keep you up all night, wouldn't it? God. Yeah, I'm, re I'm really happy to live <laughs> somewhere else in the city away from that. I mean, even then, what if they tried to, like, destroy the wall? What if they blew it up? I mean, that, w that wouldn't just disturb you in the night. If they successfully blew it up, I mean, your, your, your house might go with it. Thankfully that hasn't happened yet. Even though I don't think it ever will happen. I feel really anxious about living in one of those houses. Wouldn't you? Anyway. We hear all sorts about these people. All sorts about... The kinds of people who are desperate to make their way in. And it gets a little scary sometimes, but I think most of the time they're kind of seen as these figures of fun. You know, they've got even more nursery rhymes about them for the children in the schools around here. Well, we're not singing our praises to Mr. Everlasting, we're singing about the, the funny breaches and all of their madcap ideas doing all of these, all of these silly inventions, contraptions, and all sorts of different things. Just to try and get in some way. Even though, I don't think they even know what they're looking for. Would you do that? I mean, hmm. it's human nature, isn't it? To try and open things when we don't know what's inside. The whole what's in the box question. You see a box and maybe maybe you're completely content and satisfied in life and not wanting for anything, but you see a box. You're like, man, what's in that box? Or what if it's something bad? Maybe we think the same thing about what's on the outside. Hmm. Best for us to stay in here, I think. I can't imagine. I can't imagine things getting much better, to be honest. Instant cures for illnesses, and potentially de-aging technology soon. And generally, generally there's not a lot of crime around here, although any big city's going to have a, a pretty a pretty sort of dodgy reputation on the street level, so that's why I'm a little cautious about letting you run home on your own. But we'll sort, we'll sort that out when I'm finished with uh, cleaning up here, okay? Oh, it is, Paris. up here was without much worry for me. They really do just let you choose whatever it is you'd like to do. And I didn't really have much I wanted to do for a lot of my life, and then I 
found alcohol to be quite fascinating. The way it's brewed, the way it's invented and aged, mixed, served. And I decided I'd like to do that. And so that's what I do. You don't remember anything about what job prospects are like outside, do you? No. No, you don't. <laughs> See, I almost got you there. I almost got you. I assumed you were from the outside, and if you were drunk enough, you might have been like, ah. Uh, Answer my question a little too fast. If you really were someone who'd made it in, you'd have to be a lot more careful than that. something to you, it looks like you've just got a million more questions to ask. <laughs> no, no, I am happy. <laughs> you can't psychoanalyze me, especially while your vision is blurred like it is. I'm fine. Grown up a certain way, continue to live that way, and I'm still that way. Happy doing what I was doing, happy doing what I am doing, and you know, I think I'll be happy doing what I'm doing in the future as well. But maybe I'll be proven wrong. <laughs> in that case, I'll get to choose to do something else. Isn't that nice? Aside from the breaches, who we obviously always try to refer to as these silly, silly little goblins who are always up to mischief, there is someone out there that we sort of talk about like they're a bit of a, a boogeyman, you know? Supposedly, if there is one group, or maybe the largest one of these people who are trying to get in, their leader is someone we tell our kids that they will get a visit from in the night if they don't eat all their vegetables. Oh yeah. No one's come closer to getting in than they have. It's always kind of paired with the Breacher story, right? We tell our children point in love that the people who will injure themselves with their madcap inventions just trying to see maybe some of them just want to see what luxuries we've got but it's paired up with the story of Breacher King. Mm, yes. We don't know what they look like. We don't know who they are. Man, woman, otherwise. But all we know is that they're always finding out a little bit too much. 
And so the story goes. So the story goes that if our kids don't eat their vegetables, if they don't do their chores, he'll figure out their secrets. They pretend, say, Yes, Mom, I ate my vegetables. And then they sneak them into the bin. We tell them, oh, the Breacher King, he'll know. And if he knows, so will I. And then they panic, no, 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 not the Breacher King. And they reach back into the trash and they pull their vegetables back out. I'd like to think that they'd get some new ones, but yeah, whatever. That's the level of panic, right? So how does he do it? I don't know. I recall there being a real scare some years ago. A real, real scare about it. We're not really sure what it is. But there's a type of technology that keeps the walls stable. One of the reasons why they were so easy to build is that the foundations didn't need to be built so far and wide. They just kind of started at the bottom and went straight up. But, apparently, a few years ago, we heard tell that none other than the Breacher King himself had figured out exactly what it was that kept them up. We didn't know how. just made off with that piece of information. Apparently he was sending threats <laughs> to all of our leaders saying, ah, I've figured out what's going on and I'll, and I'll be with you before you can blink. And then nothing happened. Maybe he got the wrong idea or Maybe he's not really planning on doing anything too serious. Yeah, we had time to... <laughs> we had plenty of time to blink. I've been blinking ever since, and, uh... No sign of... No sign of him yet. It's a little annoying they call him the Breacher King, though, isn't it? We don't know if it's a man or a woman or anybody else. What about the breach of queen, huh? That's a bad joke, I'm sorry. But if they found out, if they found that out, where does it stop, is the real question. We haven't heard much about it for, uh, for quite a few years, like I said, but there's always the worry What if next time something does happen? Don't know. Scary, right? Don't jinx it. You're right, you're right. I shouldn't be catastrophizing. No, no, that makes sense. You know, sometimes there's this there's this idea and I don't I don't really like to I don't really like to believe in it, but it... <laughs> Some people say they don't exist at all. <laughs> it's kind of just... Kind of just a scare tactic to get people to... Do whatever... You know... Do whatever's asked of them. When they tell these stories, there are so many details to them. So much that would need to be true. People don't just come up with this stuff, do they? At least I couldn't. I don't know. People don't just come up with this kind of stuff. There is. It sounds too... It's because people always 
telling you these little stories they've heard, and they go into so much detail, and it's all these different people too. You know, you'll never hear, you'll hear all the same stories from one person, but then someone else will come up with a different story, but they always work together. So while you've never seen them, never heard from them, it all seems to add up in a weird way. Who am I to start theory crafting all of a sudden? No, I'm not into conspiracy theories or anything. It's kind of an interesting thought experiment, don't you think? What if the people we're scared of were made up to control us, huh? Ah, whatever. Maybe that's something that Bridget King would want us to believe, huh? The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. I'm just giving him more power now. Hmm. You're getting a little tired? That's no, alright. Do you want something else to drink, huh? Absolutely. No, don't you worry about a thing. Just give me one moment. I've just been washing this one out. Let's get rid of this. There we go. Need to get some more ice from another thing. Ah, there you go. Water? Just water? Really? I always get excited when people ask me to make drinks. That's why I like this job so much. All right, maybe you just want water. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just make water, but in a really fancy way. <laughs> Does that sound okay to you? Might be quite visually stimulating. An unprofessional of me to have all of this ice <laughs> just in a bag. It's where we keep it, you know. Trying to make it too loud. It's sparkling, okay, with you? I'm shaking the water, it's not doing anything. <laughs> Drink up your fancy sparkling water now. <laughs> ah yes, I'll take a bow. It's my pleasure, my pleasure. <laughs> well, it won't be long now. Um, probably just a little while longer and then we can hit the road. Just be sipping away on that water and we'll get on our way soon enough and then we'll try and figure out where the hell to take you home. <laughs> Poor thing. That, that memory of yours, it's not... This is not coming up with any details yet, is it? It would be helpful. I mean, it's a big place. Nothing yet? Ah, it's fine. Well, think hard. You know. 
you know, I would hate to put you in the kind of position where you'd need to ask me for help. That's the problem, is that I want to be able to just take you back to where you live and for that to be that. Don't want to be like, oh, haha, guess you better come on home with me. I don't, I don't want to be that kind of guy. But anyway. Uh, back to cleaning the state of a bar. Fucking hell. Right. <sighs> you know, that is something, isn't it? If supposedly the Breacher King knows all about the technology that's used to hold up the walls, why don't we Why don't we know anything about that? I mean, it's what keeps us safe. I'm sure all the people who work in the work in the power plants, making sure it all stays up, maybe they'd like to know. Maybe they should know. Maybe there was some big memo about it. Maybe there was some big memo about it that I missed, but yeah, I don't know. Go and see the walls. What are you talking about? Do you want to be driving for six hours? <laughs> we're pretty we're pretty dead center right now. Those are all the way out at the edge. It's gonna be a long drive. That's a big city, okay? You wanna see the walls? There they are. Wow. Beautiful. Starting to get really tired now. <laughs> hmm. Oh, there's another story. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, God, how could I have forgotten? Yeah, no, 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 there's another one. This is one they don't really tell the children because it's a little bit more difficult to follow, but this one's, you know, a lot more. A lot more interesting. Are you getting too tired? Or do you want to hear it? Hmm? <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll tell you. So, legend has it that long before, or perhaps even while, this city was being built, Mr. Everlasting and the Preacher King knew each other. Not sure where all the evidence for this comes from, but it's a pretty widespread story. Some people like to believe that they found that energy source together, that Mr. Everlasting wasn't some genius who discovered it and immaculately harnessed its power. Perhaps it was the two of them together. And as the story goes, Mr. Everlasting wanted to create a place like this, always and forever. This was his dream. But then the Breacher King thought, perhaps I shall make it in some other way. And they never tell us why they disagreed. Maybe it was over something silly. It's a lot of old history. Ancient, ancient history. Story of Romulus and Reem. Mm -hmm. And they started bickering and fighting, not over what Rome would look like, but just over the name of the city. I think it should be called Rome. I think it should be called Reem. Dead. Crazy story. Crazy story. Imagine killing your own brother because you wanted to name something differently. Well, I guess it's very personal, naming something after yourself. <laughs> Although 
Mr. Everlasting didn't want to name the city after himself. Although, to be fair, the Everlasting City has a very nice ring to it, doesn't it? Hmm. Must have been something more. Must have been some bigger reason why. Was it something to do with the way that the city would be run? Was it something to do with its name? Or maybe there was more going on between those two than than meets the eye. <laughs> Maybe they were best friends. <laughs> Maybe they were in love. Wouldn't that be tragic? Oof. What a star-crossed story. If they were in love, two people who are brought apart and have their whole relationship ruined all over some... Some big idea. It's tragic. No, I love love stories too. You know what the happiest ending I think would be? <laughs> Maybe if the if the Breacher King would just you know, instead of sending all these threats, I've found your technology. I've planted a bomb on the northeastern sector. I'm digging a big tunnel, or whatever it is he likes to say. Maybe instead of all of that, he should send Mr. Everlasting a message saying that he's sorry. <laughs> Maybe he'd get to come in after all. Maybe all those breaches could have their curiosity sated. And then, who knows what might happen. Messages are an interesting part. What they'll often tell people, what most people believe, is that there's some kind of, some kind of network, you know, like the internet. But we wonder, how do people on the outside have access to the internet? How can they send messages, especially to, you know, someone as highly secure as Mr. Everlasting? Well. There's another story that apparently, not too long ago, the Breacher King tried sending another message, but some people towards the edge of the city started seeing things far above the wall. And they're difficult to see over, very difficult. Think about how we're on the 65th floor, right? I mean, you can see pretty far. How many floors do you think this building has? <laughs> Higher. Higher. Yes, we're on floor 65 of 372. And this is not the tallest building in the city. If you can believe it. The walls, as you might imagine, have to cover a lot, and so they stretch, I'd say, around about half as high as this building. So they're difficult to see over. Some people who were at sort of that right level just further, far away enough from them that they could crane their necks and see over and be close enough to the point where it doesn't fade from view. Little dots, pinpricks, markers in the sky. And I, I was talking to a guy who said that he saw one of these and he insisted, he knows Morse code, he insisted it wasn't any kind of Morse code. 
And then I get to thinking, right? What if only the Breacher King and Mr. Everlasting know how to read those signals? So while everyone on the inside and on the outside sees these going over, just as a wisp of cloud with an odd color, Mr. Everlasting, wherever he may be, pulls his binoculars out and wonders. Huh. What's he trying to tell me this time? They only ever fled in from outside. Never the other way. I think Mr. Everlasting would probably try to correspond or speak back, but uh, he probably just doesn't want to give away his exact location, you know? I wouldn't. If I was that famous and I was that coveted, and if there was some mysterious villain trying to figure out where I was, sending me secret messages, angry ones. L listen, listen. Like I said, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I just think it's interesting. I'm not out here saying that they're putting, they're putting chemicals in my food that are making me believe certain things. You know, I'm pretty happy, like I said. I just think it's fun to think about. Exactly. It's just a theory. <laughs> it's just a theory. Just a theory. So, there's the idea that these two are in some way connected. And we've got a little theory that perhaps they can communicate. Do you think it's true? Old friends, star-crossed lovers. I'd like to think so, too. It makes me wonder if there could be some big ending. You know. Some kind of story we could follow. Wondering, ooh, are they going to get back together? As far as I'm aware, Mr. Everlasting isn't married, so you never know. It's always, it's always possible. Then again, maybe they are, and, and they just don't tell anybody. Hmm. Either way, it'd be a shame. It'd be kind of dishonest, wouldn't it? Oh, well, that's not really our business. Lonely? You know what? Yes, he must be terribly lonely. I'm losing track of everything I'm doing. Goodness me. Oh, my. How's the water, by the way? Good? Good. Watery water. Nice. Never a dull moment. Past hour or so we've been chatting. <laughs> that scared you. I think some air was trapped in there. It scared, <laughs> scared me as well. 
You think I'm fun to listen to, do you really? <laughs> Thank you. I feel like I've gotten used to the strangeness of this scenario a little too quickly. You hear a lot as a bartender, you really do. People are coming in here with their problems every single week. And it's always one of us who's got to sit back and say, Oh yeah, no, that sounds terrible, but I've never heard anything quite like this. Someone with so little knowledge that they have forgotten all about. Everything except the street they live on. And you couldn't even point to where it was. And the street that you do live on, I, I'm pretty sure, does not exist. Yeah, personally, I think you are just very drunk. But, whatever. It's okay. We're better to be drunk than here. <laughs> Would you like to hear another story? I'm almost done. One more, okay. If I, I mean, there's probably more. <laughs> there's probably more. But if I was to go into those, it'd be, oh well, this is what the runes are made out of, and this is, this is when this building was built, and this is the guy who commissioned the building, and suddenly we'd be going into boring territory and. You seem tired enough as it is. So while I clean up, let me tell you about one more significant character that we're all taught about. So after the breaches, who were taught to children in nursery rhymes, after the breacher king, who's so scary that children will think he's inside their minds. After all of that, there is one last person. And what's fascinating is that well, <laughs> their name isn't terribly well popularized. You won't hear this story from very many people. Not even hanging around with the elite for long enough, brushing shoulders with them, serving them whiskey. I've heard them talking about this quite a few times. This is the story of the one that got away. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to understand why perhaps this story isn't terribly well documented. Why I've only heard it in passing. Because I don't think it's something that Mr. Everlasting really wants us to know about. It's believed shortly after the walls went up. Mr. Everlasting had something of a right hand. And again, we don't know if they were a man or a woman or otherwise, but you've all heard a little bit about them. They've tried to scrub them out of a lot of old information, but there's enough old textbooks knocking around. We know. And all we really know about this person is that they were fiercely loyal, loyal to a fault, and they were always here for the longest time, always by 
Mr. Everlasting's side, and they were carrying out his duties, making absolutely sure that everything ran the way that it was supposed to. The kind of person who would always be five steps behind, always there to make sure that every single need that our leader had was met thoroughly. But then one day, a lockdown was called. And now perhaps it's different in wherever it is that you're from. Or maybe you just don't remember. It's not as though all the doors in the city lock. But what happens is... Everyone has to stay away from the walls. If you live near them, you have to come into the center of the city and find somewhere to stay until the lockdown is over. And while... The lockdown is ongoing. The walls are patrolled four times as heavily as they are normally. Now, there are soldiers who stand up on top of and at the base of the wall 24-7 around the clock, working in shifts, of course. You know, they sleep occasionally. But they quadruple instantly. These walls are swarming with people. So we heard about the lockdown. and Everyone who lived on the edge ran away. And even those of us in the center of the city, we were still nervous. What need would there be to increase our security? What need would there be to make sure that no one was near the walls? Well... We found out soon enough. No public announcement was made. No, we've, this is what happened. We've neutralized the threat. Go back to your lives. Day or two passed and suddenly all the red lights turned off and soldiers went home and everyone just went back to their lives. And I heard like I do, through the people who frequent this place. That Mr. Everlasting's right hand had ran away, and that they had done so successfully. This has never happened before, mind you. They were there supposedly there when these walls were built so perhaps that's how they knew how to get out they saw the technology and they perhaps during the chaos slipped straight through it's never been replicated never happened since I think they must have some kind of automatic system that whenever a person tries to get past if they get too far in without some kind of special clearance a lockdown just gets called instantly but that's all we know someone who Mr. Everlasting trusted for the decades the many decades near a century that they've been in power they ran away and those of us who heard the story were left wondering why because if you heard the story you d wouldn't want to be the kind of person who would leave like me when I heard the story I thought I wondered why what is there out there 
What is there that you could possibly want that this place doesn't have? I'm happy tending to my drinks, listening to fun stories, and cleaning up far too late at night. That's my life. It makes me wonder what was going on in there. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you? Locked in the depths of that forgetful brain of yours. Really? Okay. I was just asking. You never know. You never know what someone's going to know. So I figured it was worth asking. I feel like sometimes with forgetfulness, it helps to be more specific. Instead of saying, you remember what we're doing, you say, you remember that we're going to watch a film at this time, on this day, right? And then they say, oh yes, of course, I forgot. But no. No, no, you wouldn't know, would you? It's fine. Well, that's really about all I've got to tell you at the moment. There are breaches in their king on the outside. Our leader has supposedly <laughs> lived for a silly amount of years, and... He used to be close to someone who is the only person who managed to run away from here. I'm sorry that these stories don't really have an ending. It's all kind of up in the air. These characters, these incidents, they're all just... running around, waiting to happen. I wonder what the ending will be like. Maybe one day we'll get some answers. I mean, I think that perhaps the reason the government likes to keep some secrets is just to help us be calm. I think if they told us everything there is to know about everything, most people would forget. And, uh, it might just be more than we really need to know. We're happy as is, aren't we? Yeah. Happy as is. <laughs> yeah. Hey. I'll toast you to that. is to making it a nice ending, eh? <laughs> hmm. Not satisfied? Why wouldn't I be? I don't have an exaggerated sense of self-importance or anything. This is my life. I've had plenty of adventures for one lifetime. Good to just keep up with my duties. What about you? I find it hard to believe that you've forgotten so much that you've forgotten what it is you want to do with your life. All those desires and thoughts going on about curiosity and adventure must be something you've always wanted to do, right? Maybe it's something you've been doing for a while. What is your work? Where do you work? Well, you wouldn't you wouldn't know that. You don't even know where you live. There's gotta be something we can get out of you. 
if you don't mind me saying so. <laughs> oh. Makes sense, yes. You can remember little bits, just the tiniest bits of emotion. You're curious. And you've always been curious. <gasps> right. That makes sense. Perhaps last night you got a little too curious about the kinds of drinks people were offering, and now here you are. Now we're getting somewhere. You're curious. It would have been a both a boon and a problem for the teachers who and parents who raised you. Would have been a unique benefit and drawback when you were in the workplace. Any of that ring a bell? No? Hmm. Well, I wish I could... Wish I could help you more, but... I am surprisingly... Just about done here. And I really appreciate you for your patience. You've been very kind. Sitting around and waiting for me to finish cleaning. But then again, I am doing you a favor, aren't I? You would have been kicked out long ago, and... I wouldn't want to leave anyone just wandering around in the dead of night by themselves. <sighs> it's been difficult for me, you know? Been longer here tonight than I thought I would. Well, I can't say it's been too difficult. <laughs> Somewhere to be? No, no, I'm right where I need to be. Can I go out on a limb? say <laughs> that I feel like I've met you before. There's something very familiar about you. Look at me. Look at me. You feel like you've seen me before, haven't you? I am oddly familiar. I felt the same way about you. And perhaps that's why I didn't just leave you. <laughs> While you were acting a fool, we have bouncers. They would have taken care of it if you hadn't left when we were trying to lock up. But somehow I just felt like I needed to talk to you. I needed to understand what was going on. Perhaps there's something wrong with my memory, too. <laughs> if I don't remember you, but kind of do. <laughs> oh. Oh, goodness. Do you know... <laughs> I can't believe I'd forgotten. Maybe it's because it was so recent, but I'm not sure if you heard what you wouldn't have, considering how little you remember. There was another lockdown called recently. It was only two days ago. There's a lot of panic, I mean. I didn't have to go anywhere, I was just hanging around here, doing my job like always, 
I always assume the danger is quite far away. Whatever it is. There was another lockdown called. And just like before. This time in... Under... Under 12 hours? Lifted again. Everyone went back to their lives. But... Incidentally, just yesterday, right after it all ended, I was surfing, tending this bar like I always did, and a little birdie came up and told me that he'd finally done it, that the Breacher King had finally made it, on, made it inside. Obviously, he was a little sloppy. If he'd been spending so many years trying to, trying to get in here, you'd think he would have figured out how not to trip the alarm. But we can't all be great at what we do, can we? And as the story went, at least as far as I was overhearing it, All he wanted to do was to find Mr. Everlasting, to confront him about something or other, I don't know. He was running on in, sneaking through, or wherever. Wanted to hold him, perhaps a gunpoint or something else, and ask, why did you do it? Why did you throw me out? But he was sloppy. They were sloppy. Don't panic. No, it's all right. <laughs> Don't feel like you can move. No, no, no. He was a little sloppy, and Mr. Everlasting was ready for him. So, you wouldn't believe this. The Breacher King came storming into the city, expecting to find their old friend or lover drinking at the same bar he always did. Said he doesn't know what he looks like. He can go wherever he wants. And so he does. So, they tried to find him here. But when they did, there was this strange feeling that overtook stumbling, falling all over, really quite embarrassing to look at, from what I heard. And by the time they came to, the Breacher King had forgotten who they were. They didn't know anything about the city. They didn't know what they'd come there for. They didn't even know their own name. Nor could they remember the face of their old friend, Mr. Everlasting. You know, in some ways it's to finally see your face again.
difficult to try and slip the right thing into sparkling water, but you were so dazed and confused you had no idea what, what I planned to do. And so it was easy like it was before. This is really it. Your big plot to try and find me and get revenge for what? Throwing you out when you tried to have more of me than I was willing to offer. Is that all you have planned on doing? Get back in and what then? When you didn't think I was ready? don't have the words. Special forces have been waiting outside ever since you arrived. We had a good laugh about it after you fell asleep. After all this waiting and planning, catching you off guard was very easy. Quite a bit of stress off my plate. But I'm now, I'm almost sad it's over. What was it that we were cheersing to? A happy ending? You know... I would have let you back in if you'd asked. <laughs> Might have taken some time. But I'd have let you. It is you and your stubbornness. Always your stubbornness, never willing to back down. If 
I opened the door and stood there and expected you to walk out. All you'd be able to do is turn your eyes to look. Poor thing. No, no, but don't think I'm the cruel one here. Don't try and make me forget about the way that you've treated me and the way that you've treated my people. I never used to believe in karma, but I think this is what that is. Look at that. I haven't seen that before. Your throat is like... It's like you're desperately trying to scream, but you can't. It's quite sad. <laughs> oh well. I'd rather you didn't. Wouldn't want to give. Wouldn't want to give the guys outside a heart attack. <clears throat> no, no. here. We could have just shot you dead the instant you came in and the world would have rejoiced that the Breacher King was finally dead. But after everything you did, I think it's my right to say goodbye to you in my own way. So enjoy the next little while, in the next few hours. That toxin that's stopping you from moving, it'll either pass harmlessly out of your system, at which point you'll wake up in a maximum security prison, or you'll be dead. I'm so happy, personally, that the world will finally come to understand the price of betraying someone like me.